All right, welcome back. It's Bandits time, and they play Saturday night against the New England Black Wolves, and we have Chase Fraser and Ian McKay, a couple of Canadian boys in the studio with us. Uh, they, they're from the Bandits, and they join the show. Um, welcome, gentlemen. First of all, are you familiar with the instigators at all and what we do around here? Yeah, I've seen the show once or twice. Couple times. And every day is what you're saying. You're right. You're right. I like that. I, you know, humble guy doesn't want to admit that he uh, watches every day. Um, first of all, congrats on a great season, both of you. Yeah. It's nice. tough sitting here too, having to go back and forth. Um, but great season. Are you like excited for this Saturday? Of course, I'm sure. Oh, extremely excited for this Saturday. It's going to be a little closer to the mic, bud. It's going to be awesome for us. It's going to be uh, incredible. Yeah. You're a rookie. You're, you're a second-year guy, so two-year tenure, we call guys like you guys at second year, and they act like they've been around forever. What about you? <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Um, I mean, first year in the league, pretty lucky to even be in the playoffs and be in a situation like this. So just trying to take it all in and go day by day. I was asking you earlier um, the crowd from last year to this year. Yeah. And tell me about the difference between the crowd last year and this year. Oh, it's a uh, big difference. Um, we get a lot more people out this year, more fans. I uh, feel more support than last year because, I mean, like we said. How we many fans earlier, do you get out? Uh, I think last game we had close to 16, over 1,600. Or 16,000, 16, sorry, 16,000. 16, yeah. 16, yeah, 1,600, 16, I was going to be like. <laughs> yeah, no, 16,000, sorry, yeah. 16,000? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Roaring, too. Music yeah. playing. Oh, yeah. You haven't yeah. been, eh? Yeah. We got to get old man. And I heard it's game. a different crowd, too. Totally oh, it's like crowd. a it's, it's like a wrestling like Jackie, crowd. Jackie Moon. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> like that. Exactly oh my, that, like is, that. that is amazing. <laughs> but <clears throat> crowds matter, and we have this conversation in hockey. I mean, being here last year to this year, and, and going around to different ranks, it's a common theme in in your league. Like some crowds are are more attended than others, or some games are more attended than others around the league. But can you feel the crowd when you're out there? Like this is a this is a, a pretty wild crowd that you have here in Buffalo. Oh yeah, we feel it. You know, we, we you know you know they're there. It's like even. Like just our warm ups, everybody's surrounding the glass, kids banging for balls and asking for them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an unreal experience right now, honestly. Is, is it like that anywhere else? Uh, there's a few places around the league that are pretty good. Um, I haven't been to Colorado yet, but uh, my uncle actually played there. Um, I got to go as a kid, and they always did pretty well. Um, Calgary, I think, does pretty well. Um, where else this year have we been? Well, I, like I've talked to Ro I've talked to players uh, like after games and stuff because, like I said, I grew up in St. Catharines, so a lot of guys that I know that have played in the league and they always <clears throat> loved coming to Buffalo to play because of the crowd. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's just I think Buffalo sports in general, but the Bandits. I mean, I, I, not necessarily the the lacrosse league is followed as as highly as uh, other sports. I you know I believe it's a huge hugely uh, growing game. But talk about what a championship would mean for you guys. Oh, it would be huge. Because you're the favorites, right? I mean, you guys won 14 games. It's a record, right? 14 games, yeah, 7 on we, the road. We won 14 games this season, but going into this weekend, it's a new season, right? Uh, we're, everybody's 0-0. Zero zero. Everybody's stat line 0-0. Zero zero, uh, <laughs> He's a veteran. Talking, right? That's a, do your tenure, <laughs> right? Do your tenure. I've right? been through it. Oh. Follow me, boys. Follow me right to the midst of Avalon. Uh, but like that, just, uh, yeah, we're just going to play our game and we'll be successful that and way. And that's... Yeah, if you're watching the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, it's uh, it's nothing truer statement than it, you're starting a new season. Columbus Blue Jackets taken out probably the best team to play in the National Hockey League in the last 20, 25 years in Tampa Bay and Calgary, uh, number one seat. And uh, I mean, all four number one seats got knocked out. So this is something that I think you guys can. You guys probably from. take that to heart, eh? Yeah, you know, looking at that, it's like it sits uneasy sometimes. Well, you're, you're just like looking around, like okay, that's the vibe going around the sports world right now. It's, yep. it's, it's nerve wracking, but I feel like we'll be all right. Well, uh, it, let me ask you. I mean, w which position? Ah, I guess you'd rather be in your position, but it's it's not always uh, comforting being chased. Like you're the you're the one that everybody wants to knock off. Yeah, uh, I mean. Lacrosse playoffs are a little unique where it's a, a single game elimination the first two rounds, so it's not a series. Um, so having those home games is nice because, like we said, the crowd's been unbelievable this year, and getting that one game in front of our home crowd um, is definitely helpful. But like you said, though, single game, anything can happen. So Hockey's changed so much that we, you know, we, we, we talk about it's not nearly as aggressive. What happens in a game if somebody like Brad Marchand sucker punches one of your players while, uh, while he was on his knees? Um, for our come team. on, come on, <laughs> come on. Did we the bench is clear. I mean, I like. No, we got the right guys, and uh, I feel like everybody on our floor would, uh, or on our team, would uh, back anybody up if anything like that were to happen. But uh, fortunately, we haven't had anybody take uh, 
toll on any of our guys like that this year so is that the mindset though of your group i mean nobody takes liberties on our players because if you're successful like i said you people are going to want to play you harder hit you harder maybe knock you down a little bit and i mean is that is that a motto that your coaches instill and your leaders instill in you because that's what we're seeing in the stanley cup playoffs yeah i think our i mean our captain c priolo is one of the toughest guys in the league so just having a leader like that who is not afraid to look after anyone, whether you're a veteran on the team or a rookie on the team, he's he's going to be one of the first guys to step in and help you out. And I think it just kind of trickles down from there. So, Toughest guys in the league, eh, Riv? I love it. I'm yeah. looking at uh, who's uh, Nick uh, Weiss. Nick oh, Weiss. Nick Weiss. Weiss. He, had a, he had a good cowboy. Tracy yeah. yeah. Weiss, yeah. is, he, is, he, uh, is he the guy that's going to be uh, in, in your corner or what? He's one of those guys. 41 Pims out here. 41 yeah. Pims, yeah. He, uh, right on. So are you, guys, are you guys, like, skilled and tough like you like like when you look around the league in terms of toughness i mean you you always knew when you had a tough squad rolling into a building are you got you guys always feeling like you're in in charge out there Uh, yeah personally i feel like we're pretty dominant and in charge with the control and the physicality of the game you can tell he's the guy that hides behind everybody hey Hey, you got him reaching over over stevie you got him right you got got him right oh he's on the floor coach i can't go (laughs) uh so tell tell us a little bit like i I, every time we've had bandits on the show we have to we have to talk about your goaltender um, Matt Vink. No, and you have to talk. About it. <laughs> well, I gotta talk about it. Matt you Vink. saw his shirt off at the gym or something like that. Oh like, yeah, God, like creepy. Man. The man it's is not even jacked. that. It's, but it's but it's the success. It's the success. I mean, you know what's the what's the theme in in uh, you know, playoffs or or anything else? It's your goaltender. I mean, it's 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 one of the things where um, if you don't have good goaltending, you don't really have a shot to win. So this guy's what going down as maybe one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. That's got to give your boys some confidence. They eh? rolling on the floor. Oh yeah. I mean, being a D guy, you're and being a first guy or first year guy in the league, uh, and him coming to Buffalo has been huge for us. And it just kind of gives you a sense of confidence with knowing the back line is one of the best goalies who's ever played the game. And it kind of allows us to take some more risks. And I'm a transition guy. I like to sneak out and try and get my goals every every now and again. So knowing that we have him back there um, allows me to kind of try and sneak out those uh, those odd times. We're talking with Chase Fraser and Ian McKay from the Buffalo Bandits. They play on Saturday, 7.30 p.m. What, what, face-off, right? I was going to say yeah. puck drop, but um, it's not even a ball drop. It's just a face-off uh, against the New England Black Wolves. I want to ask this question, and, and so for a lot of viewers that uh, have a more of an understanding, you both played lacrosse in college. Yep. Field lacrosse. Yep. What I don't want to ask you what the difference is between the two games, but what's the transition like going from field to box? And then I'm sure both of you will go from box at the end of the season back and play in the summer. Like, you guys play le- uh, year-round. Yeah, we play year-round. Uh, honestly, it's, I play offense in both sides, uh, or in field and box, so it's not really that hard. I guess it's, it's uh, just adjusting to, like, the spacing because it gets tighter in box, and then with field, you got a lot more room to run. You can slow down, I guess, and... Uh, just and the defense is different in field because they got the six foot long poles and you're getting beat up with one of those. But what's your what's your what's your best asset? Like if you're you're an offensive guy, what do you? Like? Uh, field cross wise, it's in my shot. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot and of yeah, well, that's not saying much because the net's so ball. big. All you gotta do is hit the net. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got some power behind my shot. I guess you could say <laughs> sidearm. Uh, everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come from all angles. We like to oh, give them a hard time. Yeah. Be your tenure, right? <laughs> Tell them to shoot harder and get closer every yeah, time they're... in practice. We'll do, like, the horseshoe shooting, and everyone's a few steps back, and we like to bug him that he takes a couple extra steps in and really lets it go. I honestly don't know how lacrosse goalies do it, box or field. Bo- field for sure. Field's crazy. Oh, yeah. They don't have anything on. No, just the chest protector, and they got their stick. Uh, they're crazy. There's something it... something going on in their heads, but it's just not right. What position do you play in field? Field, I'm an offensive midfielder. So, so he's the guy who does all the running. He's the workhorse. <laughs> just on the O side. I don't like getting back on D. At school, we used to oh just call God. a timeout. Yeah, I, I just lost all the respect. <laughs> <laughs> this guy I would, I would try. I take it back. I would try to get back on D, and our coach would call a timeout. You know what's amazing about out. you guys, too, is what, you know, for me, it's kind of, I haven't watched a lot, of your, a lot of your games, but when I look at the statistics that, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't lie. Number one, you have the most goals in, in, in the league at 244. But what's impressive to me, too, is also you have the best defense in, in the league and allowed 
uh, a lot less than most of the teams in the league. And I think uh, when you put those two things together and, and guys do care about defense, even though you're on the outside, I think those are the things that translate to championships. And, uh, I mean, what can you tell us about, you know, New England? Uh, what are they called? Any the, tough the guys Black in that Wolves. squad? The Black, Black Wolves. Wolves. Yeah, they got a couple, couple tough know. guys. Um, like, is that a factor in your, in your game? Like, is, like, like, tough guys coming into your building, like, uh, in the way that they play? Yeah, is that, they is that a big check factor? and slash for free. For free, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't well, think everybody as I much mean, anymore. Most, is this not the most vicious sport alive? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, I like no, this. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm dead yeah, serious yeah. when I say that. Uh, I'm, you know... I remember back years ago when my when my son played lacrosse uh, for the very first time. He was a very young guy. I could not. I, I was dumbfounded standing on on the sidelines because hockey you can't use your stick and and cross everything you a, weren't allowed to do in front of the net to defensemen or you, to forwards. You can, you do, can do in lacrosse, and I don't even think the guy needs the ball. No, no, you can. If I remember runs coming by to a game you can, you can, you can spear a guy in the stunt, like make it look like you're going for his hands. Right? Yeah, yeah. You can get away I, with what a, a great I, sport. I, I remember coming to a game when I was <laughs> a kid. The, the first time I saw it was it was called the Mill, the Major Indoor Lacrosse League, and I just remember somebody was running on a breakaway, probably uh, Johnny T, and the defender was just hacking him i mean chopping oh, yeah. at his legs and his waist and just boom boom no penalty yeah i mean they've tried to make it an emphasis this year of kind of getting away from the slashers but when you're on defense you give it to someone and the ref just tells you to ease up a little bit there's never a penalty or anything it's, usually, it's always so. the refs are always just hey it's a warning yeah you got four warnings and that my arms is absolutely black and like, blue at the end <laughs> at the end of games are you guys in because uh, you know obviously uh box it's it's a lot less uh space are you guys just covered with uh um ice bags at the end of the games like i just can't imagine uh, you're you're not walking out of the the arena without multiple ice bags yeah. all over your arms. Well, they, the lacrosse players riv are historically known for icing from the inside out with a nice cold frothy <laughs> lager. <laughs> Should have been a lacrosse player. <laughs> I would have been a great lacrosse player. You might have been the second best of all time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we got to go. You guys promise to come back after well, I'm going to say it, you guys can't say it, but after I can be cocky on your behalf after a big win on Saturday, get yeah, you guys back. Yeah, let's do this. We'll, we'll be yeah. watching. Oh, yeah, we'll, it's going to be a good game. Get rid of the other two guys that we had before. <laughs> get rid of Dane and Josh, Dane and we'll bring Josh. you guys back. It's been a lot of fun. Um, Bandits, again, Saturday, 7.30 p.m. They are playing the New England Black Wolves. And we've been with Chase Fraser and Ian McKay here from the Bandits Instigators. Final segment coming up. You guys want to stick around? Stick around for a couple sure, more sure. minutes. It won't hurt. Sure, sure. You guys got faces for TV for sure. <laughs> WGR 550 and MSG. We'll be right back.